Hi everyone and thanks for dropping down to Pete's Garage. I want to take a minute and explain something that I get a lot of phone calls and emails about where there seems to be a lot of confusion or questions and that's on torque and angle. And torque and angle are two very specific things. First of all, angle is not simply just a little more torque. Angle is a very complex calculation. The calculation is based on the material of the fastener the tensile strength, its elasticity, a lot of the physical properties of the material, and the base material that it's going into. Uh, and it's also based on thread engagement, the area of thread engagement. For example, a quarter 20 bolt is going to have less area of thread engagement than a quarter 28 fastener. So that's part of it. And there are a lot of other physics involved, and I'm not going to get into that because it's extremely calculated, but I can make it very simple to understand. Torque is very simple. It's one of Newton's laws. Every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Let's say I have a bolt here. And let's say I'm putting a, uh, I've got my torque wrench on there and I'm torquing the bolt in that direction. The equal and opposite reaction is going this direction. Okay? So, this resistance to rotation, and we're rotating around the center point, resistance to rotation is torque. That's important to understand. The torque and angle is a critical part of understanding fasteners because all vehicles today, from engine components to body components, are fastened with some sort of torque and angle strategy. That's very important to know. So, in order to explain this a little bit more, uh, uh, first I want to talk about torque and what torque wrench to choose when you're doing a particular job. You can improperly choose a torque wrench. The first thing to no, or the important part of a torque wrench is to make sure that you do not use more than 80% of the capacity of the torque wrench. And what does that mean? Let's say, for example, I have to torque something down to 20, uh, 20 foot-pounds, okay? 20 foot-pounds. I do not want to use a torque wrench that goes from 0 all the way up to, let's say, uh, 200. Because if I do that, 20 is way down here, and that's way too low. The torque wrench is not going to be very accurate at that range right there. If we look at it, you'd be better off using an inch-pound torque wrench. And it's a very simple calculation. One foot-pound equals 12 inch-pounds. Okay? So if I need to torque something on the 20 foot-pounds, I'm going to take 20 times 12, which comes out to 240 inch-pounds. Now, for this, I'd be better off using an inch-pound torque wrench that goes from 0 to 500 inch-pounds. If I do that, 240 is going to fall right here in the middle somewhere. With having that in the middle of the range of the torque wrench, I have a better shot of getting a better torque or a more accurate torque on that fastener. So what is a stress strain diagram based on? If I were to take a sample of steel, a very simple 1020 steel, and I had a small test sample, it would look something like this, and we go like that, like this, and this would be placed in a fixture that would be clamped on the bottom and there would be on top a hydraulic ram that would pull this what would it be doing is be pulling this sample apart and there would be a gauge and the force applied would be constant and as the force is constant this meter would go up and up and up and up from zero to forty fifty thousand psi to try and pull this sample and it would eventually would fracture that's what we're looking for, the fracture point. Now, if we took time, going this direction, time, and we took at regular intervals, let's say at every one second we took a measurement of where this meter was over a period of time until it broke, we would plot that on a chart and we would end up with our stress strain diagram. So plotting out the readings we took from that test, and if we were to plot it out on a graph, this side being stress, and this side being strain, we would get a line 
on a regular piece of uh, 1020 steel that would look something like this. It would go up, it would come down a little bit, then it would go up, and eventually come like that. Now, there are a couple points that are critical on this, this curve. The first one is this. We're going to call this A. The A point, this right here, is referred to as the proportional limit. Proportional limit. That is also known as, very simply, the uh, elastic modulus, elastic modulus, elastic modulus, or the ratio of stress to strain, stress to strain, so we have a slope of a line, and that's definitely a, uh, just simply a proportional limit. The second point that's important is, is B, right here, we'll put B up there. This is the elastic limit of the material. And this is extremely important to understand what the elastic limit is. The elastic limit is also known as the yield point. The yield point of the material. And what are, what's the difference? When you torque down a fastener, and let's say it's just a regular bolt on a, uh, on a water outlet, and you're, you're torquing down here somewhere, let's say it's 15 foot-pounds. You can put that on, take it off, put it on, take it off, put it on several, several times, and as long as you are on this point on the line, uh, you, you run no risk of stressing, breaking, fatiguing, anything with that fastener or the base material. You can put it in and out as many times as you want. That's the proportional limit of that. What you want to do is, know and understand what the elastic limit or the yield point is. The difference between the two, the difference between these two here, this is where the angle calculation comes in. The angle calculation is an additional clamping force right there to get the maximum holding power of a fastener. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a couple, couple dotted lines here so we understand where these fall on the stress-strain diagram. Uh, this I'm going, to, I'm going to label that as sigma y um, for the yield stress. This will be our yield stress. Our yield stress. Okay? And we'll put down here this Greek letter. We'll put this at epsilon y. And this would be known as the yield strain. This is where these two forces from the strain and the stress would equal the elastic limit or the yield point of the material. Why is that important? That's important because at that point as long as you tighten right there no further the key thing is that it is temporary. As long as you don't exceed this point and loosen the fastener, the material will not deform and it will not be ruined in any way. It can be used, but you have achieved the maximum clamping pressure of that fastener, okay? Now, the next point to understand is right here, and this is, we'll call this one right up here, call this point C. Point C is very simple, it's the ultimate strength ultimate strength of the material. This is where when you have a fastener that's torqued to yield, you're torquing it past this point, you're getting up towards this point, and this is where you have plastic deformation. On this side of the torque curve right here on the stress strain diagram, here is where the fastener is permanently deformed. That means once it's torqued down and the angle's applied, you take that bolt out, you have to throw it away because it's been stressed past its temporary position to go back into its original position. So we have our ultimate strength here. And I'm going to label these ultimate strengths on our stress strain diagram. Put a line down here. I'll call this uh, epsilon, uh, well, for force, I'll just call that our uh, uh, fatigue or this will be our strain of failure. 
Once you get to that point, once you go past that, this is where the this is where the fastener fails. If we come over here on our stress part, this would be known as the ultimate stress. Ultimate stress. That means that is the largest or highest amount of stress we can place on a fastener before it fails right here. This is where it would break. This breaks down to zero right there. Okay? We also have the final point on a stress strain diagram right here. And I'll able uh, just simply label this 1D. And this is where the fastener or the threads would fracture. Right there. Now, what's the difference? You have angle, angle you can apply right here to make the fastener reusable. Again, that's temporary. Once you pass here and you apply an angle and you get to this point right there, that is it. That fastener is spent. Once it's taken out, it has to be thrown away and a new fastener replaced because it's past the yield stress or the temporary ability of that fastener to return to its original shape or its original form. Past that point, the fastener is no good. So those are the critical points to remember. We have the elastic limit, the elastic modulus where you can put it on, in and out infinite amount of times without damaging it. We can apply an additional angle which is different than torque. The angle is the calculation that's going to get us up to this maximum clamping force of the fastener and that is our yield stress. That's our yield point right there and again that's important to know because it's temporary. And finally we can do a calculation on an angle right here to get us to almost the ultimate strength of the material. The material will start to work harden and right there is the maximum clamping force of that fastener. Once you take it and go past this point here, this is where you throw away your fastener and you have to get a new one. This, this relationship here, um, the, the, there's something called the Poisson's ratio. Let me write this real quick and I'll end with this because it says it's important to know. It's the Poisson ratio. The Poisson ratio is, is a very simple calculation and it's represented as V. The V ratio is the uh, the epsilon of the 2 minus, or I'm sorry, divided by the uh, epsilon of 1. That's the ratio over here where you have the failure fatigue, the ratio between the two, and there are different points in here that are measured uh, on the stress strain diagram and that's part of the physics involved that I don't want to get into because it's very complex but this is why I wanted to show you that torque occurs right here angle is a calculation that occurs right here and it's a calculation that occurs right here as long as the angle is to here it's temporary once you go past here you gotta replace the fastener no good, torque to yield, fastener spent, replaced with a new bolt. I have a sample fastener just put in this head right here. I have my inch pound torque wrench and right now it's set to 200 inch pounds. And All you do is put it on your fastener, turn it, until it clicks. So that's tightened down to 200 inch pounds. So now I want to add 30 degrees of angle. So I have my snap-on angle gauge right here and you use this arm to, to lock the, the gauge in place. So I'm going to put it right there. I'm going to set my, my uh, gauge to zero. And I'm going to put 30 degrees of angle on this fastener. So I'll put my wrench on. And I'll get everything set nice and straight. And I'll very simply turn this to 30. And there is 30 degrees of angle on that fastener. So this is what torque and angle is all about, specifically angle. I hope you learned something from this. I hope it helped you understand a little bit more about torque and angle. And I hope it helps you avoid the mistake of thinking that angle is just a little more torque. You over torque a fastener, you strip a thread, and we all know how aggravating it is when you strip a thread. This is Peter from uh, Pete's Hot Rod Garage. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for watching.